Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present the results of our study in the seminar organized today. I will discuss about amino acid supplementation during nursery on piglet performance in the context of PRRS virus infection. PRRS stands for the porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome. It is a viral disease caused by beta arterivirus suid one that can affect all age groups. And in most cases, it leads to complications in the reproductive system <clears throat> and causes respiratory disease. In sows and in guilt, it causes reproductive impairment, although it also occurs in males too. In young growing pigs, but also finishing pigs, we typically observe signs of respiratory failure. This overall causes major economic losses because of the more complicated cases that can lead to an increased mortality and to the problems of reproduction. The, vi the vi virus has a very large variation and it mutates fast. This together with very large uh, swine populations and also multiple ways of being transmitted, it leads to ineffective control strategies for PRS. There is no specific treatment for PRS. Now there are more effective vac vaccination schemes coming on the farms by using modified live viruses. Other options for control are to have an accurate diagnosis by doing a serological profile and by screening the animals, testing, testing, testing. Another step strategy is to allow the animals in the farm to get infected and de develop a herd immunity. Also, usually broad spectrum antibiotics may be useful in controlling secondary infections. And anti-inflammatory products like aspirin are commonly administered during the acute disease. These can help minimize clinical effects, but does not eradicate the disease. One drastic measure that can be taken is to depopulate completely, clean, uh, disinfect, and repopulate with PRRS uh, free stock. But what if we could explore some strategies of diet, some dietary strategies that could be implemented at the farm level and it, that they might improve the health of the animals. So this is what I will focus today in the presentation. At the Deschambault test sta station in Quebec, a natural disease challenge model was developed by using wiener to finisher pigs. In this model, land race and Yorkshire castrated males were introduced in the nursery stage together with commercial cedar pig, pigs with known pathogens. This allowed for the natural infection with PRRS virus and also a few other common pathogens found at the farm level, such as swine influenza and bacteria, some bacterial pathogens. In this experiment, we had 60 piglets per batch in five different batches, and the animals were group, grouped in 15 pigs per pen, resulting in 20 experimental units. The target mortality was set at around 10% and severe, severe cases were treated with medication. The animals were kept in this extended nursery phage for about four weeks, having access to a special diet at libitum and also water at libitum. During the nursery, uh, the animal weight was recorded fit in intake and also water intake were recorded. There were also daily recordings of the health score. At the end of the nursery, eight animals per pen were selected and blood, feces, and oral swabs were collected. The animals continued in the grower finisher phase for about 16 weeks until slaughter age at approximately 181 days of age and uh, an average body weight of 130 kilos. The dietary strategy that was attempted during the nursery stage was to, spe to increase specific amino acids known to play an important role in immunity. The immune response calls on several proteins such as the immunoglobulins and the acute phase proteins. We also know that immunoglobulins are rich in treonine and valine, and acute phase proteins are rich in tryptophan. At the same time, a deficiency in tryptophan is known to induce muscle catabolism. In this study, a control diet, which is 
standard with amino acid profile that is following recommendations was compared to an amino acid boosted diet where the amino acid profile was enriched with the addition of lysine, threonine, valine, and tryptophan. The animals had access to these two diets ad libitum during the nursery stage, so for four weeks. And after the end of the nursery, the animals on the amino acid plus diet were switched back to the control diet. In terms of animal performance, we observed an increase in body weight at the end of the nursery of about 5% with the enhanced amino acid diet. Also looking at the average daily gain, we observed an increase of approximately 12.6%, these animals gaining uh, almost 45 grams more uh, per day on average compared to the control group. Feed intake was also higher with the amino acid plus group. However, we did not see an effect on feed conversion ratio and also water, daily water intake was not statistically significant between the two dietary groups. At slaughter, we observed the tendency for increased body weight of the animals that had the amino acid diet uh, during nursery. However, this did, did not translate in carcass weight. And when looking closely at the body measurements taken by ultrasound, there was no difference in terms of muscle thickness, fat thickness, or the calculated lean yield. By the end of the nursery, there were eight animals uh, in the control diet that died and five animals uh, that died receiving uh, the amino acid boosted diet. On the other hand, during the fattening phase, nine animals died in the control group and 12 animals died uh, that received in during nursery the amino acid diet. So by the end of the experiment, both groups had equal amounts of dead animals and we can't, cannot really conclude if the amino acid diet offered during nursery had a significant impact on mor mortality. At the test uh, station, a health scoring system was devised where three symptoms or visible signs of disease were assessed and the scores were added. An animal with a max square, uh, score of 15 was considered healthy animal without any signs of disease or distress whereas a score of less than 15 was describing pigs with various degrees of illnesses or uh, symptoms. During nursery, we observed a very pronounced decrease in health score within the first two weeks. This reflects the period of infection and the period where the animals would start producing antibodies to fight off the disease. The pigs started developing many specific symptoms for PRRS, such as the, this classic respiratory distress, sneezing, coughing, and rhinorrhea. And also we observed an increased loss of appetite and a decreased uh, gross, growth. The animals uh, started slowly recovering by the end of nursery, but they, they never reached the same uh, health score that they had in the day zero. Unfortunately, we did not see a direct effect of the amino acid boosted diet on the health score. The blood uh, collected at the end of nursery was subjected to a metabolomics type uh, of study. Metabolomics is the large scale study of small molecules within cells, biofluids, uh, tissues, and even whole organisms. The collection of small molecules and their interaction within a biological system is known as the metabolome. In this study, <clears throat> we did a non-targeted type of metabolomics, which means that we try to measure as many metabolites as possible simultaneously uh, in an explorative manner. We did this analysis using a liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry system. And this analysis was done in collaboration with the Institute of Nutrition and Functional Foods in Quebec. The animals that were not treated with antibiotics or anti-inflammatory drugs were selected at the end of nursery and blood samples were collected. For the data analysis, we used the sparse, uh, sparse partial least squares regression discriminant analysis on 145 uh, samples and uh, 520 variables, which are the metabolites detected on the LCMS platform. 
what we observed was the separation between the amino acid group and the control diet. And this separation was explained by 4.4% of the variance on, in, the, in the whole da data set. Amongst the metabolites found to be discriminating between the diets, uh, many of them were amino acids. We saw that at the end of nursery, there was an enrichment in valine and treonine in the blood of the amino acid plus uh, diet pigs. We did not see an increase in tryptophan, but what we observed was an increase in indole 3 carboxaldehyde and 3 indoxyl sulfate, which are known metabolites of uh, tryptophan. These metabolites are degradation products of tryptophan itself, which are getting transformed in the intestine by lactobacilli um, to indole 3 carboxaldehyde and also indole which uh, is another degradation product of tryptophan, which passes the gut bacteria, uh, the gut barium, uh, barrier and reaches the circulation uh, and eventually gets sulfated in the liver as a way to get rid of this compound from the system. To conclude, we observed that an increased, uh, there was an increased performance of the piglets under PRRS pressure during nursery by boosting the amino acid profile and particularly targeting the amino acids known to be important in immuno immunomodulation. Even though we did not see a direct effect of the amino acid diet on the health score measurement, we believe that there can be an indirect effect on health through an increased protein deposition, which might explain the, the, the increase in weight gain uh, that we saw and better adaptation to the contaminated environment. So to answer the organizer's question on how could this research be applied directly at the farm, oh, we believe that a boost in the amino acid profile during this period of uh, nursery could help the pigs transition faster and better through the diseases and might even minimize economic losses and mortalities in farms with PRRS. So in the end, I would like to thank Professor Marie-Pierre Letourneau Monmini, who is the chairing, uh, uh, who's chairing the monogastics group at Université Laval and included me in this project. I would also like to thank our partners at Cressad and CDPQ for performing the animal experiment and also to the founding organizations such as the Fonds de Recherche, de Recherche du Québec. And in the end, I would also would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.